I would like to take a look at some of the sexual dimorphism in mantises. So we've got males and females here. These are ghosts. I have a couple other f species to show in a second. These are the easiest to handle. We've got longer antenna with the male so that they can pick up all those ladies' scents. And usually longer, more useful wings so the males will take off and fly a lot more often than the females. Females are nice, heavy bodied, ready to carry that Uthaca. In this species, the female are the only ones that'll turn green. The males will mostly be brown. Oop, and there's, yeah, there's a fly attempt, as you can see, pretty heavy bodied. This little guy can pretty much flutter around a light bulb like a moth. And very close in size, which is one of the reasons I really enjoy this species. We'll take a look at some another three species and really look at the difference in some of the sizes. And here we have cryptic mantises. They're also very good together. Similar size for the male and female. We've got a female right here with that beautiful green, bluish green. And then the males, big long antenna. A uh, very successful, easy to breed species, as you can see by that behavior right there. He was about to jump on, even with all this stress. Oop, and there's the taken off. They're pretty easy to take care of. They don't need much water, but they are hard to handle, so I would call them a medium as far as their difficulty with husbandry. Woo! So there you go, cryptic mantis. And very, again, it's nice to have males that are similar size to the females, so you can have decent sized pet no matter what you get as they usually come in unsexed nymphs but yeah these ones don't hold quite as still as the ghosts so they're not quite as kid friendly and here we have Theopropus elegans or the banded flower mantis and you can see extreme dimorphism here so you've got a female big monster fat body and then a the little monster there's a little fairy male. So there's an example of these start out as the same size and he molts a few times less. So if you get them as a full batch as the same age, you won't end up having a male and female at the same time. And yeah, very, very extreme dimorphism. And again, the males fly a lot easier. And in these species end up becoming a snack a little easier as well. So it's always good to be careful when breeding species like these banded flowers. And we'll look at the hobby classic just to finish it up. And here we have the orchids. And we're going to have the same problem. If you get a male and a female, you're going to want them to be about three to four months difference in age. And you can also keep the females a little bit warmer and more well fed than the males when they're younger. Kind of difficult to sex up to a certain point. But yeah, you can see that crazy amount of difference. And that would conclude some sexual dimorphism with a couple different mantis species. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And yeah, check out the mobile bug zoo that we're putting together. And I'm on Instagram. And if you like this kind of content and want to see more, don't forget to Please the algorithm, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Oh, oh, he's showing off. Already, buddy? Oh no, he's pooping. Blooper poop. There we go. Making sure he doesn't get himself. Frass. I got frassed. Okay, have a great one. Thank you. I have a few species as adult male and females, so I wanted to run through oops, some of the 